right, five minutes after 10 o'clock, it is time for Ocala Magazine Radio. Today, Kelly Hart is sitting in for John Sotomayor. Good morning, Kelly. How are you doing? Good morning. Got a good show lined up, it looks like. I do. I have some really great guests this morning. Um, First of all, I'm excited to be here, so I'll be kicking off a little few weeks stint of filling in for John. Where did he go? To Bahamas or something? Where did he go? Oh, yeah. You know, he's just laying on a beach somewhere. (laughs) No, actually, um, he is, right now, he's headed to Miami. um, That's close. And I have this written down. It's very long. It's Society of Professional Journalism, Sunshine State Awards, Excellence in Journalism Banquet. Oh, getting an award. I feel, yeah, the people that are printing those banners are... um, having a go of it so but he is up for three awards two for best investigative reporting and one for best feature for his stand your ground and then the zombie land features that he did a few months back so Mm -hmm. that's where he is so it's you know slash vacation slash business kind of like mom's yeah Yeah. miami's as close as you can get yeah absolutely so he's trusted me with the show which is awesome and i'm excited to be here and um this month, if you look in our feature, we've do, we've got the 40 Under 40 Awards, oh, which okay. Ocala Magazine okay. does every single year. And so for the next few weeks, we'll be getting to meet some of the award winners. All right. So I have four with me today in studio, and I'll introduce all of them to you. Starting to my left is Mariah Moody. Uh-huh. Um, then I have Bree Seltzer, Theroshan Chetty, and Ben Bowman. And so all four of these guys were some of our award winners this month. And I want to introduce each of them and give them an opportunity to introduce who they are. Their profiles are all in the magazine, but of course there's always more to these guys than what you see printed. So we want them to be able to introduce themselves a little more to the Ocala community. So I'll start with Mariah. You can get up there to the microphone, Miss Mariah. Um, Mariah is the executive director of the Bellevue South Marion Chamber of Commerce and executive director of the Bellevue Economic Development Council. So she is a busy lady. Hello, Mariah. Hello. Um, Okay, so I was reading through your profile, and I see that you are an Ocala native. I am. I was born and raised here, and so was my father. And you've never left, and you've stayed with us, and we're happy that you're here working in our community. How did you get involved in the Chamber of Commerce? Well, when I was in my early 20s, I was um, selling residential real estate, and uh, somebody came to me. I was in a networking group and said, you should join the Chamber. And I said, what's a Chamber? And uh, so they actually, I didn't believe in it, didn't want to do it. They fronted me my dues and told me, if you like it, pay me back. If you don't, um, don't worry about it. And from there, I became on the board, I became vice president, president, and then they hired me as the executive director. And uh, when real estate got rough, uh, that's when I took on the executive director job. And I just absolutely love every day uh, working for my community and the businesses there. Now, as a former business owner myself, I, because I was a chamber member here locally, and so I understand the benefits of being involved. So for people listening that might be business owners or considering joining the chamber, Um, Just briefly explain what the benefits are to being a chamber member. Well, to be a bit, uh, to be a chamber member in any chamber, the benefits are going to be that you're networking uh, with other business-minded people that want to grow their businesses and do business in their community. The Chamber of Commerce is what we provide you. All chambers of commerce provide you with the opportunities to further network your businesses. Um, it's up to you to take those opportunities. But the chamber's job is to provide you with networking opportunities for the community, networking opportunities with other businesses. Um, it gives. Uh, it's a format for new comers that come to town or when people don't know an answer of a business they want to use they call that chamber Um, most people actually 65 percent of people will not do business with somebody that's not a chamber member uh, because it it says that you want to be affiliated with somebody and you want to be able to have people check up on you and uh, you know it's a great way to meet new people and build stronger business connections than what you would have just meeting somebody around town and to give people an opportunity to provide you as well as you provide them with stronger Uh, references. Yes, very good. And I see also that you were the recipient of the Jim Waldron Lifetime Achievement Award. Explain Mm -hmm. what that is to us. In our community, um, we have a newspaper called The Voice of South Marion, and uh, Jim Waldron was the founder of that newspaper, and his family is still very involved in the community. And uh, the Chamber of Commerce, who the Waldrons are are very involved with, uh, after he passed away, we took our Lifetime Achievement Award and changed it to the Jim Waldron Award. And we give it to people uh, in the community, and I, I obviously 
won this before I worked there. <laughs> um, you you get this award for, you have to meet certain criteria. You have to be a very involved chamber member for at least five years. You have to be involved in your community outside of the Chamber of Commerce. You have to be a, a, a business owner and um, you just have to be, uh, you know, well-rounded in, in all areas. And uh, for me to win that was amazing because I was, I think, like 26 at the time and I thought it was a little weird I thought is my time over <laughs> but uh, I was very honored to win the award um, not just because of the award itself but because I knew Jim and I know his family and it was a great honor for us around where where we in Bellevue uh, Jim Waldron was a really big deal so that's great yeah that's awesome and in addition to the things that you do professionally at the chamber what are some other community involvements that you are interested in well, um, I, I was really involved in my church for a long time. Um, I've had some personal things where I'm not able to go as often as I could, but I also am headed up our nine mile, uh, not our nine mile, our nine eleven freedom walk for about ten years. I helped with the concession and food for that. I would really believe in that event. Um, I I do things in my children's school, and um, I actually helped start the Economic Development Council on a volunteer basis in the beginning. Anything I can do for my community, I help uh, with St. Teresa's Church, they're doing a Crinkles Christmas. Anytime anybody has anything that they need done in the community in which I live, if I have time to do it, I help, um, even if it's just make phone calls, anything I can do to help the community or, or my kids, soccer, that kind of thing. Wow, okay, and then you sleep, I guess, at some point uh -huh. in the middle of all of that? I, awesome. I sleep about midnight to five, yeah, I'm good. Okay, <laughs> all right. All right, thank you. And um, now we're going to move over to Bree Seltzer. And Bree is the owner and manager of Silver Stride Equestrian Center. Hi, Bree. Yes. Hi. Thanks how are for being you? here today. So tell us how you got involved. I know we talked in the lobby a little yes. bit about you're originally from Boston. Yes. And that's then your correct. family moved here. Yes. And so just give us a, a little history of how you got started with your business. Um, well, it goes back a while. Um, when I was three years old, I came home from preschool and I said, I want to take riding lessons and uh, nobody in my family rides. Uh, so we don't really know till this day where I got this idea of riding. Um, well, eventually we moved down to Florida and uh, I, I was riding and competing and I love it. And uh, I kept going and going and I moved to Georgia for college and I worked up there in different barns and things like that. and. Uh, then I said I was going to college for art school, Savannah College of Art and Design, and I said my junior year, this is not what I want to be doing. I'm going to finish it, and I'm going to come down to Florida and open up my equestrian center. So that is what I've done. That's <laughs> great. And you were also talking in the lobby about how, especially right now in the summer, you're really busy yes. with camp. So tell us a little bit about the camp. Yeah, we have camp offer. going on right now. Um, it's 9.30 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m., Monday through Friday. Um, we get. 12 to 14 kids. It's a big camp and I love all my students so much and uh, today is the last day and they're waiting for me right now. Um, I've got Heather holding camp down and my dad and uh, So are they listening? <laughs> they are listening. Hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> hey guys. Hey everybody. And uh, I'm so proud of all of them. They've come such a long way and uh, a lot of them have been getting over their fears and uh, they have done such a wonderful job. I'm so proud of them. And where'd you come up with this name Silver Stripe? Um, me and my mom came up with it on a phone conversation one day, and uh, I don't know, we just were tossing around names, and this was the one that stuck, and uh, I don't know, it just worked. It just worked, so. And explain to people, because we were talking also about the fact that a lot of people are either unfamiliar with how big the industry right. is here, or we kind of just take it for granted. We know it's right. here and we're not exactly involved. Right. Um, well, and what my business does is it takes the people who want to compete and we compete. And the people who have never been a part of riding before, um, I get you into it. And whether you're scared or never done it before, um, I welcome all levels, all ages. And uh, it's surprising to me how many people are afraid of horses and they get on and they're like, wow, this is such an amazing feeling. And they come back and they get over their fears. And uh, I've had people going from being scared to get on and even walk the horse to walk, trot, cantering, jumping in a, in a matter of a couple of weeks. It's, it's amazing. And so describe to us what a typical day is for you. Um, a typical day. There is no typical day because they're horses and they're like children and there's always going to be something wrong and something different. Um, but when camp is not going on, um, I'm feeding, I ride all day, um, I'm training, uh, dealing with horses that have injured eyes, injured this, injured that. You never know what you're going to find. Um, and uh, then we feed at night again. and. Uh, it's always something new and something different, but um, 
It's a long day, but I love every minute of it. I really do. Is there a website that people can go and, and yes, see what you guys um, are about? Yes, silverstrideequestrian.com. Very so, good. So yeah, you can check us out on there. And we've got some of our camp stuff up and uh, broker services, training, and uh, lesson services and things like that. Great, yeah. thank you. See, Larry, you're not the only one that works with animals all day. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's going to kill me for that one. Okay. Um, next on our list is Therosian Chetty. The mic. Welcome. Thank you for being here. He is the director of tennis at Golden Ocala Equestrian Center and also ESPN tennis analyst for North Central Florida. So first, let's talk about Golden Ocala and what you do there. First, I have to admit that I'm scared of horses. So <laughs> great. <laughs> Um, well, I'm the tennis director at Golden Ocala, and uh, we provide uh, a tennis operation for all our members, and which includes events and lessons and clinics, and uh, we just have a great time, and you know, and and get people to come out and play tennis and and enjoy the fitness aspect of it. But most of all, you know, create a small little society where after tennis people can get together and have some fun. And so, let's say someone's never played tennis. Is there a person out there that is not eligible for something? Let's just say I'm off the street. Can you take anybody off the street that's never even played and make it enjoyable for them? Those are our favorite kind of people. Okay. We love those kind of people because they are so scared in the beginning. They, they don't have any self-confidence with regards to playing tennis. And, and, we, and we take them and we shake them a little bit, you know. But no, we bring them in and, and, and uh, we have some classes specifically divine, uh, designed for uh, beginner students. Okay. And they come in and they get to see other people who have never played before. And they start to feel at ease and, and that's it. I mean, it just, it just goes from there and they never stop uh, playing. Well, I think, um, you know, when you see it on TV, it's so drastic and so athletic. And, you know, someone like me, I'm, I'm, I'm not fast and um, I'm competitive, but I, I'm not fast at all. And when I, when I do play, which I, I do enjoy playing tennis, I'm not good at all. But I do just for the activity aspect of it. But um, that would be great. So even somebody like me could come out and start with a beginner class. And then is, do you advance? Is there different levels that you advance to I mean uh, yes absolutely we, uh, we we start off with a beginner class okay. and as you progress we put you to an intermediate class but we get you to play with other ladies and you get to interact uh, socially too but we test your tennis skills out we put you in a game put you in a league we put you uh, against other people locally against other clubs locally and then we may even do an interclub where you play against other country clubs uh, nationally okay. so it's a fun time even at your level to participate against the same uh, people nationally. And how did you break into this industry? Um, I was the South African National Junior Champion um, oh, in, in 19. Yeah, I just no broke biggie. into it. No, no, nothing. No, yeah. no, no biggie. Mm -mm. Just part of a normal day <laughs> circumstances, yeah. And I moved here in 1993 to turn pro and, uh, you know, finished high school and college and, and pursued a, 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 a semi-pro tennis career. And, uh, you know, uh, I worked a little bit with Robin Givens, um, the actress, and and, uh, and and Laurie McNeil to start up an academy here in Ocala 10 years ago. So wow. this is how I got to come to Ocala. And, you know, one thing led to another, and, um, and now that's where I'm at, at Golden Ocala. And tell us a little about the academy. Um... The academy started, we started this about uh, at Golden Ocala? Yes. Uh, yes. So we have a bunch of different kids from around the world mm -hmm. who come out and train and they make Golden Ocala their home because of its personalized environment. We don't treat, uh, it's not a factory, you know. So we have a lot of kids training, we have a lot of adults training in this academy too. So uh, our aim is to put Ocala and Golden Ocala on the national and international tennis map. That's amazing. And we've been very successful with it. And now also, tell us about this ESPN tennis analyst job that you've got going. Oh, it is fabulous. It's really, really, uh, it's a great opportunity. Uh, um, when all the majors are being played, the Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon, US Open, um, I uh, get on with ESPN and, and we analyze the different uh, aspects of the, uh, of the two weeks of the tournament and uh, there's some back and forth and my insight as to you know what's happening and some analysis and uh, it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity to analyze the, the tennis world. I think it's the accent. 
I think people like to listen to the accent, too. You've got the knowledge, but the accent's great. I thought I lost it. You know? No, so. no, no, no. I mean, I hear it. It's, yeah. yeah, it's great. It's amazing. Okay, thank you. And then we'll move to Ben. Ben Bowman is the executive assistant to State Representative Dennis Baxley. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Kelly. Um, so tell us a little bit. I know we talked in the lobby about it, but how you got into politics. Well, um, you know, I, I don't like to think about it as politics because okay. that kind of gets the, the connotation that people, you know, just think of yucky. <laughs> um, but honestly, it was uh, it was totally just uh, ordained by God. Okay. Um, I was just uh, working at my church and I stepped down from there to go back to school. And um, when I did, someone introduced me to Representative Baxley and things just fell into place. And it really just worked out perfectly timing wise, opportunity wise. Um, and it's really opened up a lot of great doors. I've learned a lot. Um, he's a great man to learn from. He has a lot of great connections, which allow me to meet other people and just uh, interact, learn new skills, mm -hmm. learn about new topics, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. So for you in this particular um, position, what is something maybe like the most, um, as far as experiences go, for you in this position, what's something that's really stood out for you as far as experience? Um, well, I love getting to go to Tallahassee for our legislative sessions. Okay. Um, that's something that um, a lot of people, especially in this area, don't get to experience. So being in the Capitol, um, hearing the you know the hustle and bustle and the you know uh, crowded hallways, and especially as things build up towards the last day of session and mm -hmm. all the the top issues are are finally settling, and you know they could come down to just a couple of votes either way. And and the the thing that I, I love about that whole process is the fact of where it really hits home. You know, right. and when you see these issues coming up, and they're not just, you know, things that you see on C-SPAN or Fox News, but these are things that, I mean, really affect the people even back here in our own district. I mean, everything that's done in Tallahassee or in Washington or our city hall or our county commissioners, those all affect the way that we live our lives. So um, I love being in, in Tallahassee for those type of events, and especially when the, the big issues all kind of uh, peak and they all come yeah. together. Because... Uh, it's really cool just to see the way it does all impact and come together right for people right here in Ocala. Sure. Well, I bet it hits home because usually we're on the other side of it, so we just see the results. Right. What the you know this was the vote. This is what's happening. Yeah. But to be inside and hear all the heated debates, I'm sure is is uh, pretty impactful. For yeah, you. and it can get messy. You know, just like people see in, right. the, in the tabloids from time to time, it can get messy. But um, I think most people have the right heart, and uh, there are just a lot of different. Um, different principles you sure. know people trying to uh, accomplish what they think is best for our state but um you know it's definitely a, a cool thing to, to witness and be a part of now Therosian had asked you in the lobby if you were going to run for politics yourself and you said no so what are your plans for your future um honestly we'll, we'll take it we'll take it one day at a time um that's the way i kind of like to to live my life not to be a cliche but um it's a plan for the future, but then just take each step as it comes. Um, you know, so I'm, uh, I am I've loved the business world where mm -hmm. business meets um, community involvement is really uh, probably a, an appropriate niche for me. Sure. Because um, I, I love thinking big picture. I love thinking about community issues. I love being involved in community issues. Um, I love community outreach. But um, I also love planning and working in uh, business structure and uh, trying to find the most efficient, effective way to do things. So right. I would say probably where the two of those meet is probably where I'll, I'll settle down for my career. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, you know, I, I worked in ministry, now I'm in politics, and I'm a business major, so who knows what could be the next step, so right. we'll see. Well, and you're working with a really community-oriented family themselves, the right. Baxleys, of course, and I read in your profile that you're a fifth-generation Floridian, so um, what are some things that you have attached yourself to in the community on a personal level? Well, I am a fifth generation Floridian. Uh, a lot of there's not a lot of us around anymore. Yeah. Um, a lot of people come into Florida, and there's a lot of people who leave Florida. Um, a lot of people leave Florida when a lot of people come into Florida yeah. too, because they want to get away from it. <laughs> sure. But um, I'm originally from over in Crystal River in Citrus County. Okay. We've lived here in Ocala for about um, ten years, so uh, I am a Central Florida native. Okay. But um, my great grandfather was the first mayor of Crystal River back when it was nothing but a small little fish town. So it's a uh, it's been a great. Um, great family lineage to uh, kind of see the roots of the family and then how they've kind of spread out but all stayed in the same area but um, I, I love being involved in the community and I think it's because you know I've been so rooted in this area and I've seen my my family just get involved in issues and then um, working in church ministry and seeing mm -hmm. not only the professional side that people put up but also the personal side of people's lives and mm -hmm. um, kind of seeing how that uh, how that is implemented into just 
all around uh, social policy and the way that uh, the community attaches itself to things or separates itself from other things. Um, one avenue that's been a great help for that too is Emerging Leaders of Ocala, okay. which uh, I'm on the board for this year. And um, that's been a great opportunity experience. So if uh, any of our younger professional listeners, um, check out Emerging Leaders of Ocala through the CEP. Um, it's a great way to network, great way to get involved in the community, and just great way to uh, learn about these issues. Because a lot of times, people want to get involved, they just don't know how. They don't know how to how to grasp it. They don't know where to get plugged in at. Sure. So if you're involved in some sort of group like that, that the mission is to you know further individual careers, but also just to you know um, kind of develop the next generation of people that are going to be leading our community. You know, there's a lot of current leaders within um, ELO that are making a difference right now. So it's a great way to uh, just be involved and to kind of see the issues firsthand right. and not just hear about them on Facebook or <laughs> see what the Star Banner writes, but to actually get involved with the issues and try to make a difference. Right, yeah, because Facebook is, you know, that's, uh, if, if it's on Facebook, it has to be true. It's out there, that's um, for sure. Well, and I think that's the reason that Ocala Magazine has always done this 40 Under 40 Award is because it does help spotlight people in the community that are under 40. They are the up-and-coming future of our community, um, not just sitting around, but involved in business, owning businesses, um, basically influencing our community. So I think it's really important that they do that, and, and a huge honor. Um, what I want to do is just go around briefly and ask each one of you, uh, when you found out that you had received the 40 Under 40 award, what that meant for you personally. Well, for me, who doesn't want to be recognized? I mean, it's always sure. an honor to be recognized when you're working hard, and um, I was surprised by it. Um, I like to do things that make my family proud, so that, that makes me happy. But also, anything I can do to raise awareness, and through this, it already has. We've already, I've already gotten several phone calls for Bellevue and that community. I think a lot of times people forget about that part of our community. Sure. So this is a great way for um, awareness to be raised for my chamber and for my area and for my community and, and to do things down there and make things happen. Very good. Bree? Yes. Yeah, it's a huge deal, and I, I really appreciate being recognized for all of our hard efforts and, and all of our hard work. And um, all of these people, they have done something amazing and mm -hmm. really have worked hard to receive this, and I know myself the same. And uh, to be a part of it and for our community to recognize that, it's a, it's a really big deal, and it feels great, and it was, it was really exciting. Very so. good. The Roshan? Well, I feel the same, and... Um, it was very gratifying to re, uh, to receive this award, and especially uh, some of the roles that we do play, we play them as role models, you know, for not only for our own kids, but right. for other children and and for our community, and and exactly. to uh, just to have a look at the path that some of the recipients have traveled in itself is a is a great honor. So um, you know, I was extremely happy by it, and and uh, I was thankful. Very good, and Ben. Yeah, and just like everyone else has said, I mean, it is a tremendous honor to be uh, selected for something like this. Um, and I think that the, the great thing to come out of this is that people see these young leaders. And it's not just that they, you know, interact with them from time to time, but that they, they see them in the magazine. Hopefully it'll help, you know, increase their influence because Ocala from time to time can get them kind of the, uh, um, I guess, the... Uh, opinion of being an older community right. and a lot of you know our older people are the ones that are making the decisions or that are leading the businesses that have been around for generations and just looking through when I was even reading through on my own of you know the 40 people that are selected it's great to see that these are young people who they're up and coming leaders but they're also current leaders you know and hopefully it'll just increase their influence to where um, the uh, younger community younger professionals can have really an important say in a lot of the uh, decisions that affect you know the way Ocala lives. Absolutely. Well, it's a really good way to network even just amongst each other because as you're reading, you're thinking, okay, well, these are things I'm leading or doing in my community that are impactful or positive. And then you look at what 39 other people are doing and it makes you realize that I could reach out to these other people and together be even more impactful. I mean, even out in the lobby, there was some networking going on and, you know, introducing different people. And so I think that's really positive. Larry, I looked for you. I mean, I know you still got 10 years to qualify, uh, but... It's been a while. Since I know. I'm you. like, where's Larry? <laughs> it's okay, Larry. Well, you got like a decade. We'll get you in there. Um, well, I want to thank you guys for being here today. Um, if you haven't already picked up a magazine this month, please do so. Um, there's the 40 Under 40 Awards. There's... Um, 
a bunch of really interesting articles, one on education that we'll talk about uh, in a few weeks. And the cover is just phenomenal. It's gorgeous. And we appreciate everybody that uh, makes the magazine possible. And um, I wanted to also mention briefly that Ocala Magazine is up for some uh, Charlie Awards. And I'll go into some, some specifics about that next week when we learn a little bit more. But it's really exciting. There's 10 awards. Um, you know, Cala Magazine is just phenomenal in this community. I'm honored to be a part of it. And I don't mind tooting the horn for Cala Magazine. Or maybe John can't do so as much. But um, I'll rave about them all day long. So I want to thank you guys for being here. And next week we'll get to meet some more award winners. All right. Good show. Thank, thank you, Kelly. You. Thank you, everybody. We'll take a little break and be right back. All right. Thank you. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Wear it, Florida. More clouds and sun today with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm.